हेलो एंड वेलकम टू सॉर ऑफ क्लासेस माय नेम इज अश्मिता और आज के क्लास में हम लोग जो एच एस ई का 2021 का पेपर है उसका ही कंटिन्यूएशन करेंगे हम लोगों ने पहले के एक क्लास में वन क्वेश्चन नंबर वन टू क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव हम लोगों ने ऑलरेडी कंप्लीट कर लिए हैं विथ एक्सप्लेनेशन मैंने आंसर्स डिस्कस किए थे तो आज हम सिक्स टू टेन क्वेश्चंस करेंगे जो मोस्टली बेस्ड होगा एक पोएम के ऊपर जो आपके स्क्रीन पे आप लोग देख सकते हैं ये पोएम है बेसिकली प्रिल्यूड्स ठीक है प्रिल्यूड्स लिखा था टी एस एलियट ने तो अगर आप गो थ्रू करेंगे तो देख पाएंगे कि ये पोएम जो है ये लाइंस जो है ये प्रिल्यूड से लिया गया है टी एस एलियट का प्रिल्यूड्स डिस्कशन को स्टार्ट करते हैं Uh, जैसे कि आप फॉलो कर सकते हैं द विंटर इवनिंग सेटल्स डाउन विथ स्मेल ऑफ स्टीक्स इन पैसेज वेज सिक्स ओ क्लॉक द बर्न आउट एंड ऑफ स्मोकी डेज एंड नाउ अ गस्टी शावर रैप्स द क्रीमी स्क्रैप्स ऑफ विदर लीव्स अबाउट योर फीट ओके फर्स्ट आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू दीज फ्यू लाइन्स विच आई हैव जस्ट रेड सो द फर्स्ट वन सेज द विंटर इवनिंग सेटल्स डाउन so they are talking about an evening of the winter season with smell of steaks and passage where steaks is a kind of food and uh, you can smell uh, that kind of uh, food in the passage ways all right uh, at 6 o'clock so they have mentioned the time it was in the evening 6 o'clock the burnt out ends of smoky days so you see burnt out ends burnt out ends of smoky days they have told so over here smoky days smoke when someone smokes a cigarette you can see that the ends are burning out so it has been compared uh, the bur- the burnt out ends are being compared with that of smoky days the burnt out ends of cigarettes like they have made a comparison the burnt out ends of a cigarette is being compared to smoky days oh, okay next and now a gusty shower wraps okay so gust gusty means gusty shower means there was rainfall there was downpour which has stopped wraps means it has stopped moving over to the second portion of this uh, extract given of withered leaves about your feet and newspapers from vacant lot the showers beat so they are talking about uh, withered leaves uh, like dried and dead leaves about the feet like about the feet here means uh, you are walking the speaker or the narrator is walking and hence uh, he or she can uh, see that there are withered leaves or dried and dead leaves around his or her feet okay next and newspapers from vacant lot okay so on the ground he or she can see the narrator basically the poet basically can see uh newspapers or um, like uh, all uh, uh, like spread all over while he was walking while he was walking okay the showers beat on broken blinds and chimney pots okay so the showers like the rainfall when it was going on uh ts elliot was observing that uh, it was like smashing this uh, rainfall was smashing on broken blinds what do you understand by blinds blinds means like uh, curtains okay you all have curtains at your home and offices everywhere those are the blinds so broken blinds like uh, uh, they were almost like uh, Uh, not new maybe the, the, those blinds were uh, old that's why they were they when they were smashed with the extreme rainfall it like it was it seemed like those were broken so it it is uh, being termed as broken blinds what about chimney pots so chimney pots are the open part of the chimney the above part of the chimney the top part and uh, the rain was smashing through the chimney pots next and at the corner of the street a lonely cab horse steams and stamps so uh, now the now the poet or the narrator is observing uh, his surroundings that is uh, there was a lonely horse cab it's it was a cab horse and uh, it was standing at the corner of the street uh, it it uh, it was alienated from the rest of the things that was happening it was totally on the different part of the street next and then the lighting of the lamps okay 
So next, what he could see was the lighting of the lamps. Street lamps, street lights, those lamps. All right. So that was the entire discussion of the poem. That's the rhyme. That's the uh, extract which is provided over here. Now what we are going to do is we are being uh, we are being given certain questions in the paper. We need to solve those questions. All right. Let us go over to the questions. Number six. Do follow. What kind of mood is depicted in this in the extract above? So the mood that is uh, that is uh, like um, shown in the extract above is of obviously gloomy. Okay gloomy why i am saying because it's quite sad it's quite melancholy when when we follow the lines of the poem just once you can go through the lines um you see each and every line is showing some sort of sadness some sort of like uh, um unhappiness you cannot see any kind of uh, uh, happy or gay or delightful uh, things in any of the lines which is displayed over here all right you can just go through them and realize that all the lines are very, very gloomy. All right. Okay, moving over to the other options which are provided because we need to discuss all the options that we have. So we have uh, discussed that the correct answer would be gloomy, but let us discuss what is derogatory. Now, derogatory means a sort of critical or uh, like kind of disrespectful attitude. Like uh, you all know what is critical. Critical means like giving some sort of negative reviews about something. You have heard about book, uh, critical book review, critical movie review and all that film review. So derogatory means uh, showing some sort of disrespectful attitude by uh, being critical. All right. So we are done with the meaning of derogatory. Now moving over to celebratory. Celebratory from the word itself, we come to know that it's uh, like it is related to celebration and all. So that's the meaning of celebratory. Very common word. Uh, but you see in the extract provided we we have never seen or never come across any kind of celebration so that's wrong okay that um, option which is given is wrong so derogatory is also wrong celebratory is also wrong what about carnivalesque carnivalesque means uh, there are uh, processions going on there are carnivals going on like uh, you see a group of people have uh, like excited for something excited for any festival that is carnivalesque so carnivalesque will also not go so we have already decided our correct answer that's gloomy moving over to the next question that is question number seven what is the figure of speech used in the burnt out ends of smoky days so burnt out ends i have already discussed about what do you understand by burnt out ends of smoky days now burnt out ends means the ends of a cigarette when it is like burning out okay and smoky days means like fog um, like foggy days like you can say uh, like gloomy days, dark days, melancholy days, which doesn't have that much of light or excitement. Okay, and no happiness is there in these kind of days, smoky days. So over here, you can see literary devices being provided. Now, you all need to know the meaning of such literary devices without which you won't be able to solve your question. So over here, let us start discussing about the uh, devices that are provided and then only we will uh, discuss which is the correct answer. So number one, it's phys metaphysical wit. First of all, wit means like intelligence and all. It's concerned with the intelligence, genius and all. So metaphysical. Metaphysical is quite a new word for many of you. Metaphysical uh, refers to like brilliant themes you can say and something which is unified by a highly philosophical conception of the universe and humankind. Like uh, something which is not related or which is not going on in the real world. Rather it is possible only with some spiritual uh, stuff. Okay like philosophical concepts you can say. So that is metaphysical wit. So that kind, kind of philosophical intelligence is there. So here in this entire speech uh, that we had seen, let us uh, go through it once again. 
that is here in this passage did you ever come across the, this kind of metaphysical wit no so we are not going to consider number one that's absolutely wrong number two conceit before moving over to the explanation of conceit, let me tell you about metaphysical wit a bit more in details. Uh, now, wit actually means some sort of clever or uh, you can say like humorous expression of some ideas. Like there is humor also, there is intelligence also. All right. So metaphysical wit in total, it uh, says that it's it, it basically means um, saying of some fine sparking things. Uh, like which will amuse us, which will shock us, which will startle us, which will make us confused. That is metaphysical wit. So I have told you about all the aspects of this particular uh, phrase that is metaphysical wit. Mo now moving over to the discussion of conceit. Okay. Now conceit. Conceit means there is imagination, there is imaginary, uh, there is imagery basically. Uh, there is fanciful comparison. So in this uh, extract or sorry, in this uh, line which is provided over here that is the burnt out ends of smoky days, you can see that there is a fanciful comparison. Just as I told you the meaning of conceit, there is a fanciful comparison that is burnt out ends. We can compare the ends of a cigarette to that of smoky days. Smoky days means dry, uh, gloomy days, melancholy days, sad days, okay. So that's a great comparison that they have made. So conceit can be a very good answer. But let us check the other options also. Dead metaphor. Dead metaphor means something which has lost its original imagery. Okay. And especially uh, through its extensiveness, through its repetitive use and because of its popular use. So dead metaphor is not uh, used over here. We, can, we have not come across uh, dead metaphor over here. So once again, I would like to say that dead metaphor is something which means that that particular thing which is being referred to as dead metaphor has lost its originality because of its repetitive use, because of its repetitive popular usage and because of its extensiveness all right now metonymy basically means that you are using one word for the other word okay instead of using one particular word you are using another word to replace it but you are meaning the same thing so metonymy like for example in day-to-day -day life we sometimes come come across these kind of examples like suit s-u-i-t suit which means business executive okay and so instead of business executive we can use the word suit. Uh, another example that I would like to give is uh, turf, T-U-R-F, turf, instead of horse racing. So sometimes we say we are going on uh, to watch the turf. So turf is basically horse racing. That is an example of metonymy. So that's it. Uh, we have already considered the correct answer. That is number two. Let us move over to the next question. Question number eight. What does the clock time in the passage indicate symbolically? So clock time. We have come across the clock time. That is evening time we have studied. Then uh, six o'clock we have come across. These two things uh, were written over here. Let me show you once again. You see over here. Uh, evening time. Winter evening they have told. Six o'clock they have told. So we have come across these two things about the clock timings. Now, what does this clock timing signify or symbolically show? Uh, it shows that uh, there is, uh, first of all, exhaustion. Exhaustion means tiredness. In each and every line, we, we see such demotivating stuff. We read such demotivating uh, line, like demotivating uh, speeches are given in this entire extract, which we have read. There is nothing which will encourage us, which will, up, uh, which will help us to rise. Nothing of that sort, nothing to make us happy. That It's full of exhaustion, okay? Now, twilight. Why didn't I choose twilight? Because twilight means half light and... Uh, it's already 6 p.m. So it's 6 p.m. It's obviously dark. Already it's dark. Uh, by 5.30 to 6, it's already like uh, it's done. 
the morning part is done there is no no light at all so it's uh, it cannot be termed as uh, twilight because twilight means half light so twilight we cannot consider that time punctuality obviously punctuality cannot go over here because that's like uh, like they are talking about clock time and here no one is going to office or no one is going to school or no one is going to their workplace that we will term them as punctual or we will relate it with punctuality so these two options won't go uh, number three is exhaustion it will definitely go number four is productivity no we cannot see anything productive in this extract which we have just read so productivity will also not go let us move over to the discussion of the next question that is what does the lonely cab horse indicate symbolically so they are talking about the lonely cab horse uh, what it shows lonely cab horse first of all let me tell you about this uh, phrase that is uh, lonely cab horse itself means that the cab horse was uh, like alienated from the society it was uh, far away from the uh, th rest of the things that were happening so lonely horse a lonely cab horse is the uh, other part of the surroundings that um, the poet has talked about now what does it simplify sorry symbolically uh, like show us obviously the first one would be the correct answer that is alienation and immobility so you see i just told you two two to three times that it was alienated from the rest of the world that is why it was feeling lonely alienated itself means that it was uh, like uh, kept out from the rest of the society rest of the happenings of the society so it was alienated alienation is is being seen over here and in an immobility means it was not moving it was restricted to that corner of the street so that is immobility number one would be, would be the perfect correct answer all right but let us check the other options also that is vigor and velocity now vigor uh is means strength energy excitement to do something but uh, we don't see anything of uh, that sort over here and velocity also uh refers to the same thing like it's energetic it's moving and all but no nothing of that sort is told in the extract that we have read so number two is wrong number three strength and superiority nowhere in the extract have we ever come across anything related to strength or anything related to superiority so this is also wrong number four no nothing beautiful was seen in the entire extract nothing symmetrical was uh, was she was seen in the entire extract so what is symmetry symmetry means like dividing uh, a particular thing into two equal halves that's the line of symmetry is there and symmetry means like having equal halves so nothing of that sort was uh, was seen in the extract that we have uh, discussed that's it so that was uh, number one which was the correct answer for this question moving over to the next question that is question number 10 yes choose the most appropriate option that can act as antonym what do you understand by antonym antonym means opposite of the underlined word so they have given underline uh, un they have underlined one word that is I can see its palpitations um, now you have to like talk about the antonym which one is the correct antonym for this word palpitation they have given the sentence also let us read the sentence once she knew it was she knew it was that that had given her the palpitation so they are talking about a person who knew what had given her the palpitation now palpitation means some sort of like uh, shaking like you shake in the winter season you shiver in the win winter season not shake you shiver in the winter season you tremble when you get uh, afraid you quiver that is what palpitation means like shaking shivering trembling that is palpitation all right now you need to find out the uh, antonym of this particular word so first of all the first word that is uh, uh, nervousness it won't go because nervousness means uh, like kind of uh, getting nausea or being quite anxious about something so it won't go okay i can see there are better words which are given over here we have to choose uh, the best suitable antonym for palpitation all right next is hysteria as you can see hysteria now hysteria means you are exaggerating something like an uncontrolled emotion some uh, it can also be an uncontrolled excitement so that is hysteria 
uh, okay number three let us we are discussing the options right now we i haven't told you the correct option till now so number three number three is calmness okay so i just told you the meaning of palpitation palpitation means uh, i told you quivering shivering trembling so that means that you are not like calm and all okay so see over here number three is showing calmness so calmness means just the opposite of trembling shivering and quivering and all okay so that's calmness and i feel that's the correct answer for the word palpitation next is trip uh, trepidation trepidation means like feeling of fear or you can say anxiety about something that is trepidation and uh, no trepidation almost is coming as a, as a as the synonym of palpitation you see nervousness and uh, trepidation both are like synonymous to palpitation now you all know what are, what is synonymous synonymous means like quite similar to the word palpitation okay so definitely these won't go and we have chosen the correct answer so that was the discussion for today's class we have done five questions and each in in each class we're going to solve like this only so if you want to follow you want to join our classes you can log on to www.sorofsysclasses.com which uh, is on the link of which website is already given uh, at the like start of our video and also you can check in the description box below you can also visit our website you can enroll from there or you can call us in the number which is provided at the starting of our video as well as at the bottom in the description box below here in our classes we normally provide you with live lectures recorded lectures portal access which is available to all the enrolled candidates 24 into 7 we also provide you with doubt clearing sessions crash course facilities mock test facilities we also provide you with uh, worksheets after every session we will also provide you with uh, like uh, solutions to the previous year's question papers unsolved papers and sample paper solutions we will provide you with study materials at your doorstep so if you want to join our classes you can either call us or enroll yourself through the link or uh, in the description box so that's it for today's class we are going to meet once again in our next classes